We're back now at 30 past the hour, taking a look in Chicago, Illinois. An absolutely gorgeous view out over the city and Lake Michigan. You see some clouds out there as well. This is behind the front that brought us severe weather over the last few days across the upper Midwest. Now it's bringing in some cooler temperatures behind that cold front. Thanks for joining us. I'm meteorologist Kit Kloniker here with your North Central Regional Forecast. You can see from these colors, much cooler temperatures across the Central Plains into the Great Lakes and Midwest. Across the Northern Plains though, the last 24 hours we've warmed up quite a bit. Now it's still going to be mild in these areas, but uh, compared to the past couple of days when that colder air mass was there, it, it's cleared up and we've had a lot more sunshine. So that's warming us up just a bit. We also had numerous severe weather reports over the last three days here from uh, softball size hail in parts of Nebraska to uh, EF2 tornadoes in parts of Minnesota. We've seen a lot to deal with. Fortunately, things are getting a bit more quiet in this area. We still have just the corner here of Missouri under a, a severe weather threat for today. So down there to the boot heel and southern Illinois as well. But the rest of us are going to stay mostly quiet over the next couple of days. Into parts of Kansas, though, we did see uh, numerous hail reports here just in the last day. So it was mostly last night where we had all those severe thunderstorms. Fortunately, things are more, more quiet around this area. But like I said, overnight into the uh, evening hours, overnight hours, we have this low pressure and cold front associated with it. It's gonna be pushing a little bit more energy, a little more lift into those thunderstorms. So that might be on the severe side for around the Poplar Bluff area, but a little bit more rainfall on the backside of that for Kansas City. That'll clear out once this high pressure moves in. And of course, uh, that will make it a little bit more sun, uh, sunny as we head into Thursday. So that will be nice. But we do see just a weak cold front that just barely makes it into the Nebraska area. So the Tri-Cities out to Lincoln and Omaha, doesn't look like you're going to see much of the impacts from this, but maybe just a few light showers coming through as we head uh, through Thursday and into Friday. Overall rainfall amounts, just a little bit of light shower activity, so maybe a quarter, a half inch or so, more uh, towards an inch down there in southern parts of Missouri. That's where we could see that flash, flash flooding risk once again. This is an area where we've had a lot of heavy rainfall over the last several days, so we could flash, uh, see some flash flooding rather quickly. Temperatures mostly in the 70s for the next several days, so it will be rather pleasant, getting up to 80 degrees for the Tri-Cities area by the weekend as well. Across the Great Lakes, we'll see a few more showers just to the southeast of us here in southeastern um, uh, Michigan there with a few of those remaining showers as we head into early Thursday. By the afternoon, though, we might see a few pop-up thunder showers across Wisconsin, the UP, moving into western Michigan. It's not going to be a lot of moisture with that. More moisture comes into southern Minnesota behind high pressure. Forecast over the next few days, Chicago, you're looking at 70s across the board as we head into the weekend. So it's going to be nice and mild overall. For Marquette, Michigan in the UP, we're looking at temperatures either side of 60 degrees for the next few days as well. With that next cold front coming in, that'll knock us back just a few degrees or so. Across Wisconsin, we have more chances for rain as we head into next week. Across the north central region here, across the northern plains, another cold front comes in. That might bring our temperatures down a little bit, but it's not going to be high impacts, just a few light showers moving through and temperatures for Bismarck once again staying in the 70s. But we've seen a lot of that severe weather across the south central region as well. And we have more chances for that today. Well, we've got some rain coming down in Boston, Massachusetts. You see there on radar that's moved in within the last hour or so. We've seen just uh, some few scattered showers across the eastern mass, but uh, it's starting to pick up a little bit heavier here over the last little bit. Thanks for joining us here on Weather Nation. I'm meteorologist Kit Kloniger here. We're going to take a look at some of those threats that are coming out right now. As we have just recently seen a new severe thunderstorm watch has been issued across parts of the uh, the northeast. So let's take you to that right now as we do see this area across uh, Ohio, northern Pennsylvania and southeastern uh, uh, excuse me, southwestern New York is where we've got that severe thunderstorm watch. So we could see winds with some of these thunderstorms that are coming across Lake Erie right now. These could eventually become severe 
and produce winds up to 65 miles per hour. One inch diameter hail is also a threat with these storms as well, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. And of course, we'll have all of uh, uh, those storms covered right here on Viper radar as we head through the next several hours. Let's go ahead and take off the watch though, because it clutters up the image just a little bit as we've seen uh, some lightning coming with some of these thunderstorms as well. Let's take a look right there coming out of southern Ontario, about 150 or so strikes just within the last 10 minutes. Not a whole lot of activity that we're seeing uh, with the lightning though, fortunately. So we won't be seeing uh, much in the way of, um, of extremely frequent lightning anytime soon. But again, it's gonna have to come across Lake Erie and eventually it will be hitting that I-90 corridor right along the shores and then moving inland into parts of Pennsylvania and New York and Ohio. Right here in Ohio and Indiana, we've got a few just isolated thunder showers, nothing really intense right now, but this is just the heat of the day getting started, bubbling up that atmosphere a little bit and getting things going. So we're going to see some of these storms uh, possibly getting a bit stronger over the next little bit. So less than 100 of uh, count of the lightning strikes here across Ohio and Indiana. We'll go ahead and take that off. Let's take a look across uh, the central uh, U.S. is where we've got some heavy uh, showers coming through as well. Lightning, uh, just a few thunderstorms there just down the I-40 corridor, but widespread light to moderate rainfall just crossed over the I-35 corridor around Stillwater, moving up towards Bartlettsville as well. Not going to be seeing uh, in incredibly heavy rain, but we've seen in this area a lot of rain over the last couple of days. So this could lead to some flash flooding fairly quickly just with a little bit of rain. Think of it like a sponge. When you have a very dry sponge, it doesn't absorb a lot of water. So if we're in a drought, we can get flash flooding. The reverse of that is still true. If you have a very saturated sponge, it doesn't take much more water from that, so you can still get a bit of flooding. So you need something that's just a little bit wet, but still has some room for the soil to absorb the rain. And unfortunately, we don't have that type of soil across uh, Oklahoma and Kansas. We've got a little bit of a thunderstorm there moving uh, just to the northwest of the Wichita area, up into southern Nebraska, a few light to moderate showers, but really across the central US, it is going to be the severe weather that we're going to be uh, keeping our eyes open for in the coming hours. Well, we're taking a look at a couple of places in Mexico where we've had some very heavy rainfall over the last couple of days. And on Monday, we saw Hurricane Agatha coming ashore. It dissipated as it crossed the mountains of Mexico. But now we're starting to see the potential for redevelopment into the Caribbean and southern Gulf of Mexico. And then even a secondary system possibly to, to develop in the next couple of days there in the western Atlantic. Now, of course, this is the greater threat here in the red, the high uh, threat we see um, moving towards the places of southern uh, Florida, Orlando, Miami, Tampa. You could be seeing some impacts from this uh, system after it develops. Even if it, it doesn't get a name, we're still likely to see very heavy uh, rainfall coming through. So you don't want to so much focus on the name of a storm. You want to focus on those impacts. Now, that, uh, we are still expecting a tropical depression to form from this. It is uh, quite likely with that, of course, and we're looking at those models. They've been starting to come into more agreement that something does form from it. If it does, it will likely be our first name storm of the Atlantic season, which would be Alex. Now we see here on the pressure map, uh, we've got 1,012 millibars there in North Northern Cuba and Havana, that's about average sea level pressure, what we would normally expect. Notice down here in Chechemal where we have uh, 1,000.7, so we've got an area of broad low pressure. Hurricanes always come from low pressure, of course, so uh, we're keeping an eye on that. The hurricane hunters are scheduled to fly out in, uh, into this complex of thunderstorms on Thursday. Models are already picking up on this and are starting to come into a bit of agreement as well as we get a little bit closer. A cluster here we see across southern Florida. Florida, crossing right over Lake o Okeechobee possibly, but still we have a few outliers here and uh, moving towards the Bahamas. So this is one of those things you want to keep updated with the most recent forecasts because a forecast as complex as the tropics develops over time and we've got to keep our eyes for any subtle changes in the early terms. We've got a lot of moisture though. That's the main factor with this. A lot of moisture here across the Caribbean and Gulf. That's going to contribute to some very heavy rainfall. So we see this one particular model 
that updates four times a day, so there's going to be different outcomes through the day. This one has it definitely formed already by uh, Friday early, early morning here, bringing a lot of heavy rain towards western Cuba. Now, we see a lot of heavy rain. Again, focus more on the colors rather than on all those circles because that would be the center of the system, but it's just one model in a cluster of them. But a lot of heavy rainfall coming across a wide area of southern Florida there, moving into the Bahamas as well. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on this because we could see a, a widespread flooding event for southern Florida. So Miami, around the Everglades, up to uh, West Palm Beach, Port and St. Lucie, um, Naples, you could be seeing some very, very heavy rainfall. We're talking three to seven inches at least for this uh, around uh, parts of Florida. Like I said, Cape Coral up to West Palm Beach and Miami all within this. The Keys are also going to see some impacts from this as well.